Hi everyone, in this installment of the Anesthetic Assessment, let's focus in on the essentials of the past medical history. This is a huge topic, but I want to give you the two tips that I wish someone had taught me when I was first starting out. And one, that's exercise tolerance, two, SSCC. I'll go through those in a bit more detail now. So let's start with exercise tolerance. You may hear a lot of anaesthetists asking whether someone is able to walk up a flight of stairs. So this is a reference to a study showing that if a patient was able to walk up two flights of stairs or walk four blocks, they had improved survival after surgery. You might also hear the term METS. I'll go into this more in future videos, but METS means metabolic equivalence. A MET is the energy requirement for someone doing an activity compared with their basal metabolic rate. So one MET is someone at rest, requiring approximately 3.5 mils of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute, or about 250 mils per minute. Two METs is twice that, and four METs is four times that. If you're interested, you can search Duke's Activity Status Index for the METs of various activities to help you when you make this assessment. So there's evidence to suggest that if someone can achieve four METs, they'll probably be at lower risk for major surgery. So when you're taking a medical history, it's crucial that you're able to get an appreciation of your patient's exercise tolerance or how much activity they can do. I'll often ask my patients if they can walk up two flights of stairs without stopping, and if they can't do that, I'll ask other questions about what they can do around the house, whether it's household chores, gardening, or are they really unwell and virtually bedbound needing support for almost everything. So if you're able to present this information to your supervisor, it'll be a rough marker of risk that we commonly use. Number two, now what does SSCC stand for? Well, it stands for severity, stability, cause and complications. It's really just a reminder to be a detective and think about all aspects of the disease in a clinically relevant way. So a bit of background. Throughout your medical training, you'll have these three words drummed into you. History, examination and investigation. In fact, these three words are the most important tools you have in your diagnostic toolkit. No matter what the problem, you take a history, you do an examination, and order investigations to come up with the differential diagnoses and a management plan. But if you want to communicate your findings to your boss, to show you understand what's really important, I'd argue that this is not the way you need to think. So history examination and investigation are great tools for information gathering, but they aren't great for synthesizing and organizing information to communicate understanding. Now imagine you're looking after a patient with heart failure. After doing a thorough assessment of the patient, I'd argue that the most relevant aspects of this patient's well-being is how severe and how stable their heart failure is. So I take all of the information I've acquired and then make a judgment call on the severity. Often there's also a scoring system, like for example the NYHA class for heart failure, and other times it's about making a judgment call. Is the disease mild, moderate or severe? So the synthesis of this information is what doctors do, and it is immediately relevant. For example, mild disease often has minimal surgical impact. However, severe disease will need specialist input and a tailored approach. Likewise for stability, an acute exacerbation of disease implies unstable disease. Imagine the patient with heart failure who is normally well, goes to work, is completely independent, but suddenly is short of breath even when sitting down. This is again immediately relevant. Unstable disease is unpredictable, needs further investigation, and can usually be improved and stabilized. And except for the most urgent operations, surgery should be delayed until the disease is optimized. Now why do I specifically think about cause and complications? When uncovering the whole story of your patient's illness, it's easy to forget that a disease doesn't just happen. It happens because of other disease, or risk factors, or tragic events. For example, let's go back to our patient with heart failure. There's so many causes of heart failure. If you don't actively fill in the gaps to your story, you may have missed critical details. Many patients with heart failure have often had atherosclerosis due to bad diets, smoking, or simply bad genetics, which then lead to a heart attack, which leads to heart failure. But occasionally it could be due to other disease states like thyrotoxicosis or anemia. And these are both very treatable and things you do not want to miss. Or digging deeper, maybe they had a tragic car accident with chest trauma. Suddenly you're not just thinking about heart failure, but were there other injuries that are going to complicate the anesthetic, like a pneumothorax or head injury? In the same way, actively thinking about complications is about uncovering the full story of the patient's illness. These days we have so many incredible, but still risky medications and treatments, that this also means thinking about the complications of the various treatments. So with our heart failure patient, I will look for the common and relevant complications of heart failure, like say arrhythmias, 
thromboembolic disease or pulmonary congestion. Or maybe they have renal failure or electrolyte disturbance from other diuretics. Or maybe they've had a pacemaker that just isn't functioning well. You can see how this can become a web of problems, but with practice, you learn the patterns and uncover what is relevant. So in summary, one, I always try to assess my patient's exercise tolerance, functional capacity, or metabolic equivalence to give a rough idea of their perioperative risk. And two, when I do a medical assessment, it is crucial to uncover and optimize your patient's disease state. I use the history examination investigation approach as the tools to gather information, but then I consider the information in the framework of SSCC, severity, stability, cause, and complications, to illuminate the whole disease and the most relevant aspects to my patient's safety. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment below if you have any questions and check out the other videos on the anesthetic assessment for more tips and tricks. Thank you.